Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today's Friday, April 7th, 2023. Today, NBA, NHL, baseball, soccer, golf, NASCAR, idol, news and notes, and best bet. We're going to try to be quick today. NBA will be first. Um, we'll go over the games that were played last night. And we'll look ahead to the weekend ahead. Um, Cavs over to Magic, 118-94. Heat over to Sixers, 129-101. Spurs over to Blazers, 129-127. Thunder over to Jazz, 114-98. Suns over to Nuggets, 119-115. Big slate today. We did not do totals, just lines. Um, 7 o'clock, we have the Rockets and the Hornets. My projections, Rockets by 7. The Charlotte Hornets are sitting a ton of people. They know the Rockets have the worst record locked up. I think both these teams know that they're in the top four of the lottery. Rockets are favored by three and a half. I'm going to lay the three and a half with the Rockets. Um, Pistons, Pacers. My line's Pacers, eight and a half, and it's seven and a half total. So three and a half. Gunplay, where do I go? Um, the over. Heat, Wizards. I have Heat by a whopping 18, and it's six and a half. Ooh, I love Miami, minus the points. The Wizards are sitting everyone. 7.30, Sixers, Hawks. My line is Hawks by 5, and it's 10.5. Woo! I kind of think Philly might hang around in that game. Raptors, Celtics. I have Celtics 10.5, and, and it's only 2.5, so they must be resting everybody. I, so I would lay the Celtics for now, but stay away. Um, Magic Nets, my line is Nets by 8, and it's 12 and a half. I'll take Orlando getting the points. Nets are locked into the uh, 6th seed, so Orlando should cover that. 8 o'clock on NBA TV of the Grizzlies in the box. I have Grizzlies by 12. Giannis and everyone is sitting, and it's 7 half. I'm going to lay to 7 half with Memphis. Knicks, Pelicans, I have Pelicans by 6. It's probably going to be higher than that. It's 8 and a half. Um, I'll take the Knicks to cover, even though they're sitting there on um, big two. Um, next is the Bulls and the Mavs. I have the Mavs by three, and it's the Mavs by 11. Oh, my God. That's crazy. I, I know the Bulls clinched already. Mavericks need the game, but that's high. The Bulls are going to cover that number. My goodness. Um. 10 o'clock, Warriors, Kings. I have Kings by 7, and it's Golden State by 8. What is Sacramento resting everybody? I'm taking Sacramento getting the 8. And then 10 30 to Suns and the Lakers. I have Lakers by 2, and it's 8.5. I'll take the Suns to cover. All right, Saturday, um, only three games 3 3 Nuggets, Jazz, 4 o'clock, Timberwolves, Spurs, and f- also four Blazers, Clippers. And then Sunday's the big day. Everybody's playing. 1 o'clock, you have the Pacers at the Knicks from the Garden. Meaningless game. On ESPN, Hawks, Celtics, meaningful for Atlanta. Sixers, Nets, meaningless game. Hornets, Cavs, meaningless game. Magic, Heat. What are the odds the Heat drop? Actually, you know what? The Brooklyn Sixer game isn't a meaningless game, actually. Brooklyn can still conceivably fall because I don't think they're locked in the six. So. That's actually a meaningful game for Brooklyn and same for the Magic Heat game. Um, Bucks, Raptors, um, meaningful for Toronto. Rockets, Wizards, meaningless. Pistons, Bulls, meaningless. 330's the West. Spurs, Mavs, meaningful if the Mavs win tonight. Um, Pelicans, Timberwolves, meaningful. Grizzlies, Thunder, meaningful. Kings, Nuggets, meaningless. Because they're locked in the 3 and 1. 330 ESPN Jazz Lakers, meaningful. Clippers, Suns, meaningful. And then Warriors, Blazers, meaningful. So, um, guess on where Mike Breen is? Probably Los Angeles, because that's a, a pretty big game. Or with the Knicks at M- on MSG, because it's the Knicks' last home game of the year. I could see him being on the Knicks game. Or I should say it's their last home game of the regular season, to be fair. Um, so, we'll see where Mike Breen is. That's going to be. And interesting uh, subplot from a a broadcasting standpoint. Now move on to hockey. We'll go over the results from the large slate from yesterday and a very monstrous weekend coming up, including a triple header on ABC on Saturday. Bruins over Leafs 2-1. Sabres over Red Wings 7-6 in the shootout. That's a high score. Panthers over to Sens 7-2. 
Habs over to Cap 6-2. Devils over to Blue Jackets 8-1. Holy crap. Pens over to Wild 4-1. Isles over to Lightning 6-1. Preds over to Canes 3-0. Stars over to Flyers 4-1. Canucks over to Blackhawks 3-0. So best bet lost. Golden Knights over to Kings 5-2. I thought about that for best bet. Should have went with that. Abs over to Sharks 6-2. And the Kraken over to Coyotes 4-2. All right. No games today. Everybody plays Saturday. 12.30, you have the Hurricanes and the Sabres. 1 o'clock, ABC, Penguins, Red Wings. Big game for Pittsburgh. And Canes, Sabres, the Canes going for the division. With the Devils won back. Um, 3.30, ABC, Golden Knights, Stars. Big game for both teams. 4 o'clock, Oilers, Sharks. The Oilers aren't really locked in in two yet. They can still in the division, so that's a big one. Um, 5.30, Ducks-Coyotes, meaningless game. 7 o'clock, Lightning-Sens. Lightning locked in the three. So that's a meaningless game. Rangers-Blue Jackets, um, kind of a meaningless game. Unless if New Jersey loses and Carolina loses, then all of a sudden it, the Metro gets a little interesting, but I doubt it. Um, I think the Rangers are... Kind of okay with being third because they've they proved that um they could win games um big playoff games on the road as we saw last year um Habs Leafs um meaningless game Panthers Capitals big one for Florida Preds Jets big for both teams the Preds are amazingly still in the Western Conference playoff race after being a seller. At the trade deadline, they are one back of Winnipeg, and Calgary is tied with Winnipeg. So Calgary is making it interesting. Um, my two teams that picked that I picked to go to the Stanley Cup final might both make the playoffs after all as wild cards. That's so funny. Um, Seven thirty, Flyers, Islanders, big one for the Islanders, and they could put a stranglehold. On a wild card spot if Florida and Pittsburgh lose. Um, 8 o'clock, ABC, Saturday primetime, Devils, Bruins, deserving game for the spot. Bruins meaningless, though, because um, they have everything locked up. They're probably just playing for the record at that point. But New Jersey um, still playing for the division. So I think New Jersey's live to win in uh, Boston on Saturday night. Um, Blues wild, big for both teams. Um, actually, I'm sorry. No, just big for Minnesota. I'm saying big for St. Louis. St. Louis is done. Um, 10 o'clock, Kraken, Blackhawks. That's a meaningful game for Seattle. That's games in Seattle. Flames, Canucks, big one for Calgary. And then 1030, Abs, Kings, big game for both teams. And then Sunday, only two games. They're both on TNT. 6 o'clock, Bruins, Flyers. And 830, Abs, Ducks. So Boston obviously playing for records. And the Abs playing for a division crowd. All right, Major League Baseball, we'll go over the results from yesterday and looking ahead to tonight and the weekend. Not a lot of games yesterday because of postponements due to weather. Um, Red Sox over to Tigers, 6-3. Giants over to White Sox, 16-6. Blue Jays over to Royals, 6-3. Rockies over to Nats, 1-0. Braves over to Padres, 7-6. And the Dodgers over to D-backs, 5-2. All right. A little bit larger of a slate today than it would have been because of all the postponements. Um, 1 o'clock today, if the Marlins and the Mets and the Mets home opener, you have Edward Cabrera and Tyler McGill. Um, Mets minus 96, Marlins plus 164, over under 7F. Over is minus 114, under is minus 106. Marlins plus 1F is minus 142, Mets minus 1F is plus 118. I like the over in the game. 220 Apple TV Plus Rangers Cubs from Wrigley. Marcus Stroman against Nathan Avaldi. Cubs minus 126. Rangers plus 18 over on their six and a half minus 10 each way. Tigers, I'm sorry, Rangers plus one half is minus 20. Cubs minus one half is plus 180. It's either the Rangers or the over. Six and a half is so low. I'll take the over. Um three o'clock, you have the Reds and the Phillies from Philadelphia. Um Hunter Green, Zach Wheeler. Phil's minus 200, Reds plus 168, over on their 7F, over is minus 105, under is minus 115. 
Reds plus one half is minus 134. Phillies minus one half is plus 112. I'm going to go with over three Reds runs, minus 104. Maybe the Phil's bullpen chokes it up a little bit. Yanks, Orioles. Clark Schmidt, Dean Kremer. Yanks minus 126. O's plus 18. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 112. Under is minus 108. Yanks minus 1.5 is plus 122. O's plus 1.5 is minus 148. Orioles home opener. That crowd's going to be raucous. I'm taking them to upset the Yankees. Plus 108. Um, 4 o'clock Mariners Guardians for the second time this year. Um, Logan Gilbert, Aaron Savali. Guardians minus 134. Mariners plus 114. Over under 7. Over is minus 118. Under is minus 104. Mariners plus 1.5 is minus 10. Guardians minus 1.5 is plus 172. Um, I like the juice over at minus 118. Astros twins make up from yesterday. Twins home upper. Jose Yerdeke, Sonny Gray. Twins minus 124. Astros plus 106. Over under 7.5. Overs minus 108. Unders minus 112. Astros plus 1.5 is minus 192. Twins minus 1.5 is plus 158. So the Astros are an underdog. And this, I think, could be the Vegas nose game. Um... Usually the Twins play the Astros well, but I'm going Astros over three and a half runs at minus 105. Maybe the, the Twins win six to four. A little after, um, a little before 415, you have the White Sox and the Pirates from Pittsburgh. Um, Lucas Giolito, Rich Hill. White Sox minus 134. Pirates plus 114. Over under eight and a half. Over is minus 105. Under is minus 115. White Sox minus one half is plus 126. Pirates plus one half is minus 152. I like the over. Um... Royals Giants at 430. So 2014 rematch, but completely different rosters. Brad Keller and Alex Cobb. Giants minus 190. Royals plus 160 over under 8. Overs minus 105. Unders minus 115. Royals plus 1 half is minus 126. Giants minus 1 half is plus 105. Um, I like that over too. Um, 630 A's raised. So the raise with yet another easy game. It was 6 0. Zach Eflin and Ken Waldachek raise minus 230. A's plus 190 over under 7.5. Minus 10 each way. A's plus 1.5 and raise minus 1.5 is minus 10 each way. For this one, this easy. I'm going to go... Oh, that's overjuiced. I like over 4.5 raise runs. Minus 104. Um, 720 Apple TV plus Padres Brave. So the NLCS preview. Um, so you have Nick Martinez against Jared Schuster. Um, Braves minus 130, Padres plus 110, over under 9, overs minus 132, unders even money. Padres plus 1 half is minus 182, Braves minus 1 half is plus 150. I like the under at even money. Cards Brewers at 8, so big NL Central game. Jack Flaherty and Brandon Woodruff. Brewers minus 162, Cards plus 136, over under 8.5, overs minus 106, unders minus 114. Cards plus 1 half is minus 152, Brewers minus 1 half is plus 126. I'll take the under, that's a high number. 8-3, Nats, Rockies. Um, Mackenzie Gore and Jose Arena. Rockies minus 120, Nats plus 102 over under 11. Overs minus 120, unders minus 102. Nats minus 1 half is plus 146. Rockies plus 1 half is minus 176. Yeah, the Nats are 1, or one and 6, but I actually think they can win. They're live here, plus 102. And I like Mackenzie Gore a lot. Um, 9-3, Blue Jays, Angels. That's a big one. Chris Bassett, Patrick Sandoval. Angels minus 118. Blue Jays even money over under 9.5. Overs minus 120. Unders minus 120. Jays minus 1 half or plus 1 half is minus 184. Angels minus 1 half is plus 152. I love the Jays to win outright at even money. And last but not least, 940. D backs hosting the Dodgers. Clayton Kershaw and Madison Bumgarner. Dodgers minus 225. D backs plus 188. Over under 9. Overs minus 106. Unders minus 114. Dodgers minus 1 half is minus 30. D backs plus 1 half is plus 108. Um. For this one, this is easy. I'm going with, oh, it's juiced. So this is like a pitching matchup everybody would have loved in 2015. Um, I like the over in the game, minus 106. All right, Saturday, 2 o'clock, Astros Twins, Lucas, Luis Garcia, Joe Ryan, 4 o'clock, Reds Phils, Nick Lodolo, Bailey Falter, Royals Giants, Brady Singer, Ross Stripling, Fox Sports 1, Rangers, Cubs, Martin Perez, Justin Steele. Red Sox, Tigers, Tanner Houck, and Joey Wentz. Marlins, Mets, Trevor Rogers, Cody Senga. A's, Rays, Shintaro, Fujinami, Jeffrey Springs. Mariners, Guardians at 6. 
Marco Gonzalez, Cal Quantrill, 6.30, White Sox Pirates. Mike Clevenger, Vince Velasquez, 7 o'clock, Yankees O's. Nestor Cortez and Cole Irvin. Um, Cards Brewers. Jordan Montgomery, Eric Lauer. Pods Braves, Michael Walker, Charlie Morton. 8 o'clock, Dodgers D-backs, Noah Syndergaard, Zach Davies. Nats Rockies, Trevor Williams and Austin Gombert. And 9 o'clock, you have the Blue Jays at the Angels, Jose Barrios and Tyler Anderson. All right, Sunday, 1 o'clock, Reds Phils. Graham Ashcraft, Taiwan Walker, Red Sox Tigers, Cutter Crawford, Matt Boyd, A's Rays, James Caprelli and Drew Rasmussen, 130 Yankees O's, Domingo Herman, we don't know who's going for Baltimore, um, White Sox Pirates, Michael Kopech and Johan Oviedo, Marlins Mets, we don't know who's going for the Marlins and Carlos Carrasco is going for the Mets, Mariners Guardians, George Kirby, Zach Plesak, Astros Twins at 2, Hunter Brown, Tyler Molly, um, Cards Brewers, Jake Woodford, Freddy Peralta, Rangers, Cubs, John Gray, Jamison, Tyon, 3 o'clock, Nats, Rocks, Chad Cole, Ryan Feltner, 4 o'clock, Royals, Giants, Chris Bubik, Anthony Sclafani, Blue Jays, Angels, Yusei Kikuchi, Reed Detmers, Dodgers, Z-backs, Michael Grove, Ryan Nelson, and Sunday Night Baseball, Padres, Braves, what a wonderful matchup, Seth Lugo against Dylan Dodd. All right, now we'll move on to soccer. Um, We're going to try to get through the soccer segment very quickly here. We'll start with the MLS actually. Because um I think that'd be easier. Um all right, so 7:30 DC United Columbus, Cincy Philly, Miami Dallas, LA FC Austin, New England Montreal, NYCFC Atlanta, Red Bull San Jose, 8:30 Chicago Minnesota, Houston Galaxy, Nashville Toronto, Kansas City Colorado, 9:30 Salt Lake Charlotte. Um, 10.30 Seattle, St. Louis, Vancouver, Portland. Alrighty. Um, so, first we will do, um, results from Cup de France, um, from yesterday, Toulouse over NSC 2-1, Women's Internationals, um, Poland over Costa Rica 2-1, Spain over Norway 4-2, Switzerland, China 0-0 draw, Wales over Northern Ireland 4-1, and Venezuela, Argentina 1-1 draw, but Venezuela wins 7-6 on penalties. All right, um, going on right now, Scotland over Australia 1-0 in the 78th minute. 47th minute, New Zealand, Iceland 1-1 draw, halftime, Sweden, Denmark 0-0 draw. Um, Greece, Croatia 1-1 draw final, South Korea over Zambia 5-2 final. And Finland over Slovakia, 1-0 final. All right, going on right now, Serbia and bosnia hers and Slovenia and R- Romania. Um, 10 o'clock, we have Albania and North Macedonia. Um, let's see here. Um, if we have anything live here. Um, no, um, and then you have Nigeria, Haiti, Hungary, Israel, 1130, 12 o'clock, Estonia, Malta, Portugal, Japan, 1 o'clock, Belarus, Russia, Netherlands, Germany, 2-3, Austria, Belgium, Uruguay, Peru, and 3 o'clock, France, Colombia, Saturday, um, 2-30, TNT, USA, and Republic, Ireland, Sunday, 3 o'clock, Argentina, Venezuela. And then Monday at 7 o'clock a.m., you have Slovakia and Finland. All right, English Premier League coming up this weekend. 7.30 a.m., Man United, Everton. 10 o'clock, Austin Villa, Nottingham Forest. 10 o'clock, Brentford, Newcastle. Flem, West Ham. Leicester, Bournemouth. Tottenham, Brighton, Wolves, Chelsea. 12.30, Southampton, Man City. Sunday, 9 o'clock, Leeds, Crystal Palace, and 11.30, Liverpool, and Arsenal. We have the UEFA starting next week, so that's exciting. Um, so the NWSL is off this weekend. Um, Mexican Liga tonight. Um, 9 o'clock, we have Puebla and Toluca. Um 
Playbooks plus 280, Toluca minus 115, draw plus 260. Um, I'm going to go with Toluca minus 115. And 11 o'clock, Tijuana and Claritaro. Tijuana minus 135, Claritaro plus 340, draw plus 260. I'm going to go with the draw plus 260. Saturday, 7 o'clock, Guadalajara and Nacoxa. 9 o'clock, Leon Cruz Azul. Tigres, Mazelton. And 11 o'clock, you have America and Montieri. Sunday, 2 o'clock, UNAM, Athletic San Luis, Santos, and Pachuca at 8. And at 10 o'clock, you have Juarez and Atlas. German Bundesliga. Saturday, um, Leverkusen, Frankfurt at 9.30, Dortmund, Union, Berlin, Augsburg, Cologne, Mainz, Bremen, Freiburg, Bayern, and 12.30 at Hertha and RP Leipzig. Um, Sunday, 9.30, Gladbach and Wolfsburg, 11.30, Bochum and Stuttgart. And one thirty of Hoffenheim and Schalke. Spanish La Liga tonight, three o'clock. You have Sevilla and Celta Vigo. Um, Sevilla's plus one ten. Celta Vigo plus two sixty. Draw plus two twenty. Um, Celta Vigo's been hot. I'm gonna take them at plus two sixty to knock off Sevilla. Saturday, eight o'clock, Osasuna Elke, ten fifteen, Espanol and Athletic, twelve thirty, Real Sociedad, Getafe, and three o'clock, give Real Madrid and Villarreal. Sunday, eight o'clock, Valladolid, Mallorca, ten fifteen, Betis and Cadiz, twelve thirty, Almeria and Valencia, three o'clock, Rayo and Athletic go. Italian Serie A. Today, eleven o'clock, you have Salernitana and Inter Milan. Um. Salernitana plus 550, Inter minus 240, draws plus 270. Um, I just can't go against Inter. Under 2.5 goals plus 114. 1 o'clock, Lecce, Napoli. Lecce plus 420, Napoli minus 145, draw plus 240. Um, don't see Napoli losing here. Over 2.5 goals plus 132. 3 o'clock, Milan and Empoli. Milan minus 300, Empoli 7 1, draw plus 380. I'm going to go over 2.5 goals, minus 118. And then Saturday, 6 30 a.m., Udinese, Monza, 8 30, Fiorentina, Spezia, 10 30, Adelana, Bologna, Sampdoria, Cremonese, 12 30, Verona, Sassuolo, Torino, AS Roma, 2.45, Lazio, and Juventus. French League 1, 3 o'clock, they give Lens and Strasbourg. Um. Just gonna pull up um, the numbers here. Lens minus two ten, Strasbourg plus five fifty, draws three to one. Lens is hot. Over two and a half goals, minus one ten. Saturday, eleven o'clock, Angers Lille, three o'clock, Nice and PSG. Sunday, seven o'clock, Lyon and Rennes, nine o'clock, AC and Jossi and Auxerre, Montpellier and Toulouse, Reims Brest. Troyes and Clermont Foot, 11 o'clock, Nantes and Monaco, 245, Lorraine and Martial. All right, anything else I want to touch on? Um, English League Championship, a lot going on right now. Um, so Rotherham is beating West Brom right now, 3-1, and Millwall and Luton, nil-nil draw. A lot of games getting underway right now. Um, not going to bet them, though, because of time. Uh, 10 o'clock, Blackburn, Norwich City, Blackpool, Cardiff, QPR, Preston, Reading, Birmingham, Sheffield United, Wigan, Stoke, Bristol City, Swansea, Coventry, Watford, Huddersfield, 12.30, Sunderland, Hull, four, and 3 o'clock, Borough, and Burnley. And then Monday morning, we have 7.30 at Huddersfield and Blackburn. And then the Dutch League um, today, 2 o'clock, you have FC Groningen and FC Utrecht. Um, so Groningen's plus 195. Utrecht plus 120, draw plus 240. We'll go with the draw plus 240. Saturday, 12.45, Vitesse and the Go-Ahead Eagles, 2 o'clock, AC Alkmaar and Sparta, PSV, Excelsior, 3 o'clock, Heronveen and FC Voldenham. And then Sunday, 6.15, FC Twente and Cambor, Emmett and NEC, 
10.45, Ajax and Fortuna. And 2 o'clock, you have Feyenoord and RKC Waldwick. All right, so that's it for Notable Soccer. Um, we're going to quickly look at the Masters Live leaderboard right now. Um, so your leader right now with a score of 8 under, Brooks Kepka, Tied for second with 7 under, Victor Hovind. John Rahm and Jason Day, fifth with five under is Cam Young. Tied for six with four under is Shane Lowry, Xander Shoffley, Adam Scott, Gary Woodland, um, Scotty Scheffler, Sam Bennett, um, and Sam Burns. Tied for 13th with three under Tony Finau, Jordan Spieth, Colin Morikawa, Justin Rose, Russell Fox, or I should say Ryan Fox. Tied for 18th with two under. Um, Matt Fitzpatrick, Joaquin Neiman, Phil Mickelson, Seb Straka, Tom Kim, Cam Smith, Justin Thomas, Keegan Bradley, Chris Kirk, Scott Stallings. Tied for 28th with one under, Patrick Cantlay, Patrick Reed, Fred Couples, Sanjay M, Hideki Matsuma, Harry English, and Dustin Johnson, and Max Homa. Um, tied for 36th that even, um, Taylor Gooch, Kevin Kisner, Abraham Anser, Mike Weir, Kelly Lee, Rory McIlroy, Tommy Fleetwood. Tied for 43rd with one over, Jason Kokrak, Ryan Hanley, Seath Diglia, Seamus Power, Adrian Murnock, Taylor Moore, Saiwo Kim, Brad Horschel, Tyler Hatton, Corey Connors. Now I'm just going to go through notables. Tied for 53rd with two over Sergio Garcia, Tiger Woods, Zach Johnson. Tied for 58th with three over Adam Spepson, Kurt Katayama, Charles Schwarzel, Francesco Monarni, Vito Pereira, Taylor Hogue, Brendan Carr. Tied for 69th with four over Luis Olton, Mackenzie Hughes, JT Potson. Tied for 74th with five over Bubba Watson, Brian Harmon, Cam Champ, Alex Duran. Tied for 78th with six over with Bryson DeChambeau. And in withdrawing, Kevin Na. Alrighty, NASCAR from for the weekend. Um, if I'm not mistaken, we only have truck and cup this weekend. Let's double check. And we have truck tomorrow night. No Xfinity. And then cop on Sunday night. So we have a, a primetime NASCAR race, which is for the cup, which is pretty exciting. So um, we'll start with the truck race tomorrow. Fox Sports 1 from Bristol. The Weather Guard truck race on dirt. So my pick for this one. I'm going to try to go with the longer shot here. I'm going to go with Grant Effinger at 25-1 to 1 to win this race. And then Sunday, 7 o'clock on Fox from Bristol, the Food City Dirt Race from Bristol. All right, so Mr. Bristol himself is 12-1. to 1. I can't go against Kyle Busch when he is... Not on the short end with Kyle Larson, Tyler Riddick, and Chris Bell. Kyle Busch is it. 12-1. to It's a great bet. Great value. I laid a tenth of a unit on each pick. All right, so NBA season is coming to an end for a lot of teams. And... We're going to have Black Monday on Monday where um, there will be several coaches and general managers that get fired and throughout the week and such. So I'm doing some speculation here for the most part. And um, we're going to go by division. And I'm going to give my pick for most likely to be let go, um, least likely to be let go in any circumstance, or wouldn't it be shocked if, they get let go. All right, so we'll start with the Atlantic Division. Most likely to be let go, Nick Nurse. You're hearing the rumors. Um, his salary got leaked. That's pretty much a guarantee at this point, regardless of how they do in the playoffs, because I just don't see them making round two this year. Um, I would be shocked if Jock Vaughn got fired. I think he did the best coaching job in the division this year. Especially the last 
two months with went in the, um they traded Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and they had the brand new team and had to do a lot of adjusting. So I would say Jock Vaughn is least likely to get fired. I wouldn't be shocked if um Doc Rivers got fired. If the Sixers don't make the conference finals, I think he is gonzo. And I think Tom Thibodeau safe from the Knicks. Especially if they lose to Cleveland and Julius Randle misses the series, and at least they have, like, an excuse to say, like, oh, well, we were missing Julius Randle, and if he was here, maybe we would have had a chance. Or something like that. I'm just using it as an example. If they, they were to lose to Cleveland. Um, and then Joe Missoula clearly downgrade from Ike Adoku. Uh, Ime Adoku. So, um, we'll see there. Um, the Southeast Division, um, most likely to get fired. Um, this is kind of by default because I really couldn't think of a good one. But are we sure Steve Clifford is not one and done? I mean, maybe Wes Unsell Jr. Maybe. But I'm going to go with most likely maybe Steve Clifford as a one and done. But yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if Wes Unseld's fired. And I'd be shocked if um, Eric Spolster in the heat part ways. And I don't, see Qu- I don't think Quinn Snyder's won and done. But maybe he has some regrets. Who knows? Because C- of other jobs that could be open. And then the other one in that division is Orlando. I don't see them moving on from uh, Jamal Mosley anytime soon. Um... The Central Division, most likely to get fired, Dwayne Casey. They weren't supposed to be bad this year. They were supposed to be improved. They were supposed to be what the Magic were, if not better. And no, they're in the driver's seat for Victor Wembanyama. So I think there's a chance he's fired. Um, I'd be surprised if Buck Showalter, or not Buck Showalter, um, Mike Budenholzer, I had the butt in my head. So let me think of Buck, but um, Mike Budenholzer, I'd be surprised if um, he was let go because they just won the title two years ago. When it shocked me, Billy Donovan's fired because they've underachieved this year. Um, Rick Carlisle, I think, got himself another year, and then um, who's the other coach in that division? Um, J.B. Bickerstaff probably the best coaching job in that division this year, unless you can make a case for Coach Bud. Or you could even argue uh, Carlisle did well this year. I think a lot of those coaches did well this year, except for Dwayne Casey, whose team ended up tanking. Um, Western Conference, we'll start with the uh, the Southwest Division. Um, most likely to be fired, definitely um, Stephen Silas from the Rockets. They're the team that's most likely to fire their general manager as well. Um... I'd be shocked if this is a default one, but um, I'd be shocked if uh, Greg Popovich um didn't retire or did retire this year. Um, I mean, he thinks he's getting Wemby. If he gets Wemby, he's staying for a little bit longer. If he doesn't get Wemby, scoot. Or even Brandon Miller, I think that there's a chance he's out, meaning like he's gonna retire. But I don't think Popovich wants to go out on a lousy season like that. So that's why I say that too. So I'm gonna say Popovich least likely to leave or get fired or whatever. And then Taylor Jenkins, um, I think he's safe. Um Willie Green, I think, could be a sleeper if the Pelicans fall in the play-in that I know Zion got hurt but they still underachieved this year in my mind um and then Jason Kidd I think is getting the axe that team's been a disaster especially since they got Kyrie I'll make a feed on that trade but Jason Kidd is just not a good basketball coach he wasn't good with Brooklyn he wasn't good with Milwaukee and he's been bad with Dallas, other than last year when they made the conference finals. But that was Luka, and that wasn't Jason Kidd. 
So the case for him staying would be that they made the conference finals a year ago with him as the coach, but the case against him is that the team badly regressed and um, they need a new voice. But I do think Kidd gets the axe. Um, the Northwest Division, uh, most likely to be fired, I'd say Chauncey Billups. I know he's only been there for two years, but he's not been good as a, an NBA head coach. Um, least likely to get fired, um, Will Hardy of the Jazz. I think he's done a fantastic job this year, and I think he deserves being played for Coach of the Year despite having a losing record. Um, and I would not be shocked. This is a ballsy one. If the Nuggets don't make the conference finals, is Mike Malone safe? Are we sure? I'm not so sure. So I'd say I wouldn't be shocked if Mike Malone's let go. Mark Dignall is absolutely safe. He's done a fabulous job with the Thunder this year. And this has been his best coaching job yet. Um, Chris Finch has done okay this year. Um, I don't think they'll fire him. Despite new owners. Um, and then the West. Most likely to be fired. Um, this is the hardest one because I think everybody's safe in this division. But I got to be honest. I thought about it. I think the most likely fired or let go is probably Monty Williams. What if Kevin Durant wants to pick his coach? What if he doesn't what if he has a falling out with Monty Williams in the playoffs and they lose in the second round or in the first round? Are we sure he's safe? That team underachieved until Durant showed up. And you could argue they've underachieved with Durant a little bit. But I understand injuries and everything. But they probably um should be better than this. And uh, the owners New owner didn't hire him, so I'd say Monty for those reasons. And then I'd be surprised if this coach was let go. Obviously, Mike Brown, he's done the best job in that division this year, getting the Kings to a top three seed. And then I wouldn't be shocked if Tyron Liu was let go because that team's underachieved this year. But don't necessarily rule out Steve Kerr leaving the Warriors. What if, I know um, Joel Aikup would never fire him. But what if the Warriors lost in the first round to Sacramento or whomever, or they fall in the plan and lose? Drama with Draymond Green and Steve Kerr sees the situation. It's bleak outside of Curry. These young guys aren't developing. I want out and want to start fresh. And Chicago opens up. Or and he goes to the Bulls, or Popovich retires, he goes to San Antonio, and maybe he's coaching Wembenyama, who knows. So, I could see Steve Kerr leaving the Warriors if things go poorly in the playoffs. And I think Darvin Ham's absolutely safe. He's done a nice job this year at the Lakers. So, I think I think Darvin Ham's done the second-best coaching job in that division this year, behind um, Mike Brown, honestly. So, um... There you have it for NBA Black Monday. Um, We'll see what happens come uh, Monday and throughout the playoffs. All right, American Idol is on Sunday as it'll be the showstopper round. Um, Should be a good episode. Um. There's a lot of people I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, and the top 24 is going to be announced on Monday, which is pretty awesome. So we have Sunday, Monday again this week. So um, we had the duets episode on Monday night. So... Elijah McCormick was a platinum ticket winner, and the platinum ticket winners got first pick with their partners, which is pretty cool. 
He picked Lucy Love, and they performed My Girl by The Temptations. They both made it through. Karina D'Angelo and Nutza performed I Put a Spell on You. This was awful. I don't think Nutza deserved to go through. Um, Karina, Nutza shouldn't be advancing because Nutza was the one that quit on Karina, and she deserves to be punished for it. Not that Karina deserved to advance anyway, but the fact that Nutza advanced bothers me. Elise, Christine, and Matt Wilson performed You Are the Reason by Callum Scott. They both made it through. Warren P. and Hannah Nicolaisen performed It's Your Love by Tim McGraw and Faith Hill. They get through. They were good. Zachariah Smith and Isaac Brown performed I'm Still Standing by Elton John. But they didn't know the song or the lyrics. Neither of them deserved to go through for that reason alone. They badly messed up the lyrics. They send them through because they deserve a second chance. If that was Randy, Paul, and Simon, they would have been out. Goodbye. Simon would have said, so long. Goodbye. And then Randy would have been like, bro, bro, bro. Nah. And then Paula might have been nice a little bit, but if that was 15 years ago, they're done. They don't deserve to go through. Um, Tyson Venegas and Kaylin Hedges. They were two platinum ticket winners. Tyson got the... Um, Tyson picked Caitlin. They were outstanding. They performed Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, and they easily went through. They were the best duo, hands down. And I think they're both locks to be in the top ten. They are so good. And I think this could be the final two. I really do. If you ask me who's the final two at gunpoint today, I'd say Tyson and Caitlin. Caitlin. They both deserve this opportunity. I'm so happy that they partnered together. Um, next up, John Wade Hatfield and Preston Duffy performed by Dirt by Jordan Davis and Luke Bryan. Um, Preston went through. John Wade did not. Um, I don't know if Preston should have gone through or not either. Ian Tongi and Oliver Steele performed Save Your Theaters by The Weeknd. They went through. And it was a really different version of that song. Um, so there was a trio because Aiden Boyer could not find the partner. And it turned out that there was an odd number. So Summer Joy and Jaina Elise welcomed him into their group. And they performed I'm Still Standing by Elton John. And those three all made it through into the next round. And they all deserved it too. As the girls letting Aiden in, I think deserve it alone. And Aiden's really good anyway, but... Because of Aiden's situation, um, those and those two being very open and accepting him, I love that. And those three contestants, I hope to see go far, especially Aiden, because I think he's very talented. Um, PJ and Wiani, a very unique duo, performed Hit 'Em Up Style by Blue Vontrell. They both got through into the next round, and deservingly so. Um, Shay and Cam Amon performed Listen to the Music by the Doobie Brothers. Um, Jay left the competition the night before the performance. And there was speculation that he was going to drop out, but he came back and they hit it off and both of them got through. And then last went Kaya Stewart and Fire. And Kaya withdrew from the competition on the spot. She was sick and didn't feel good. So Jaina Elise replaced Kaya in the duo with Fire as they performed What Do You Want From Me from by Adam Lambert. And Fire was crying. I felt so bad for Fire. I think she was just in tears of shock because of Kaya. Um, abrupt decision to leave the competition. But Fire went through. I think Fire deserves another chance because of the circumstances. That wasn't Fire's fault. Like, that's not um, Zachariah and Isaac screwing up the lyrics. It's not Nutza being lazy and leaving Karina in the dark. And Fire deserved the second chance. I'm glad that... Uh, 
um, she got rewarded because she was screwed over by Kaya dropping out. And very nice of Jaina, again, for uh, stepping up. I think Jaina has been the best sport of this whole season. I love her. I think she's amazing. So we'll see who goes through, and I'm looking forward to it. All right, news and notes um, for today as we head into the weekend. Um, we'll start the NBA. Uh, Zion, unlikely for the play-in as he's unlikely to return from his hamstring strain in time for the play-in tournament. That's according to Shams. And then David Griffin said that he will continue conditioning following the hamstring injury. This is interesting. Laurie Markinen to do military service as he will fulfill mandatory service this time or this offseason with the Finnish military. So that is pretty cool. That um that he's um doing military stuff in the offseason. Um LeBron blames the Clippers loss on the second of a back to back. Jesus, LeBron, that's loser talk. I get it, everyone's tired, but you know what that is? Loser talk. Um, some football stuff. Um, the Bills want to move up. Is it's very possible that the Bills will move up from twenty seventh to pick a skill player or a lineman? Hmm, very interesting. The Baltimore Ravens are looking at other quarterbacks as they're considering full spectrum of quarterbacks in this draft after Lamar's trade request. Who, baby? The Rodgers deal could be at the draft as the Packers and the Jets are still working out. Draft compensation may make deal official on the first night of the draft. Okay, so that's kind of relieving if you're a Jets fan. Um, Chris Jones claps back at Tyreek Hill as he turns up the trash talk after Tyreek said he'd be Casey's worst enemy. Hmm. Well, they won the Super Bowl without you, Tyree Kill. All right, so there was an old um, TikTok video of Bryce Young and C.J. Stroud joking around at quarterback camp. Shows how long they've been friends. So that's pretty cool. Will Levis works out for the Colts as he had a private session in front of Shane Steichen and Chris Ballard and others. Baseball. Um, here's something interesting. Um, minor league pitcher rips Tatis as a AAA pitcher who gave up a home run to Tatis took twi- took to Twitter after calling him a cheater. That's again loser talk. Where's the evidence that he was still on PEDs after the suspension? Do- don't you think Tatis knows better? Freaking losers! I swear, that kid's just a loser. Mets call up Francisco Alvarez to join team ahead of home opener with Omar Navarro is expected to miss eight to nine weeks. Um, listen, I don't root for injuries in any sport. We gotta be honest. This is addition by subtraction for the Mets, and this is an upgrade. And Alvarez is gonna be on the team for the rest of the year, if you ask me. And he was my pick for the rookie of the year, and I think I predicted that Omar Navarez Navarez was going to be designated for assignment potentially by the Mets. Him and uh, Escobar. But um, more likely now with uh, Alvarez coming up, especially if Alvarez rakes like I think he will. All right, so um, the U.S. Open Cup third round. Um, The drawings happen. Um, yesterday, um, so the, uh, third round drawing, um, I'm going to read it off right now. Um, so it's going to be Loudoun United FC against Flower City Union. The New England Revolution against the Hartford Athletic. D.C. United against the Richmond Kickers SC. Pittsburgh River Hounds SC against Maryland Bobcats FC. Charleston Battery against the Charlotte Independents. 
Charlotte FC against South Georgia Tormenta FC. The Tampa Bay Rowdies against the Houston Dynamo. Miami FC against Inter-Miami CF. Atlanta United against Memphis 901 FC. Nashville FC against San Antonio FC. Birmingham Legion FC against Chattanooga FC. Columbus Crew against Indy 11. FC Cincinnati against Louisville City FC. So a lot of these are are like locals, which is really interesting. Um, Detroit City FC against Minnesota United FC. Chicago Fire versus the winner of Forward Madison FC. Chicago House AC second round match. St. Louis FC against Union Omaha. Sporting KC against Tulsa Athletic. Colorado Rapids, Rapids against Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC. The Las Vegas Lights FC against Real Salt Lake. New Mexico United against Phoenix Rising FC. Sacramento Republic FC against Oakland Roots. Monterey Bay FC against San Jose Earthquakes. Portland Timbers against Orange County SC. Seattle Sounders against the San Diego Loyal SC. So that is very interesting. Um, as... Um, So, we'll see how that goes. Um, so, um, Jonathan Taves, I'm sure of his NHL future, is, he has no idea if he'll keep playing next year or move on to other things. Hmm. College basketball. Iowa pauses women's college basketball ticket sales as high demand forces the school to hold off on next season's ticket sales for the um um for the women's basketball team. So that is um crazy considering uh um you know, uh, with Caitlin Clark and everything. So, of course, um, that happens. But still, I think that's wild. Um, so, Hamai Hawk has entering the draft for um, from UCLA. So, that is um, big college basketball news right there. All righty. And last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, so yesterday's was a loser. With. Um, the. Over. In the Canucks game. Not happening. So. I am going to lay a half unit, or I'm sorry, a quarter unit. There's a lot I like. I'm trying to stay away from the NBA a little bit because of injuries and such and people, like, sitting. So I'm going to go to baseball for my best bet today. And there was a couple that jumped out to me. And the one that I like the most Ooh. There was a couple that I really liked. Maybe it wasn't in baseball. Maybe I will pet an NBA game. Celtics went down. Everybody's sitting everyone. That's what's nuts about it. I actually really do like the Rockets minus the four against Charlotte. So it's either going to be that. Orlando plus the points against Brooklyn. Memphis minus the points at the Bucks. The Bulls plus the points at the Mavs. 
It's just an anti-Mavs pick. The Lakers are 9.5 against the Suns now. The Warriors are 9 against Sacramento. So you know what? I'm going to go with the Bulls against Dallas. This is an anti-Mavs pick more than anything. So I'm going to take the Bulls plus 11 against the Mavericks as my best bet of the day. All right, so that's it for the show. And I'll be back on Monday recapping everything and looking ahead to everything tomorrow. Or I'm sorry, on Monday. What am I saying tomorrow for? Oh my goodness. All right, have a great weekend, everyone.